Now all the manufacturers at CES this year have got their 4K displays, but a 4K display is kind of wasted if you don't have any content, native 4K content to show on it. Now I'm joined here by Ted from Red. Uh, How are you? Hi Ted, nice Thanks to meet you. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you in fact, because Red of course make the Red Epic, and the Red Ray, and you know, things like The Hobbit was shot in Red Epic cameras at a 4K resolution. Correct. And in 48 frames Actually, 5K, 5K, 5K resolution. 5K resolution. Um, so I guess, yeah, let's, let's start with the, the Red Epic and uh, sure. actual shooting. So um, talk a little bit about the Red Epic, about maybe about The Hobbit and, and, uh, and the kind of content that's being shot right now at 5K resolution. Uh -huh. Yeah, so CES, uh, our good friends at Toshiba were gracious enough to um, let us show off our Red Ray player for the first time to the world. And they said, why don't you put an Epic so people can see what it all comes from. And so this little box here is, an, is one of our Epic cameras. Like you mentioned, Peter had uh, about 60 of them to shoot Hobbit. Um, if anybody saw the movie Flight, the Robert Zemeckis movie, uh, with Denzel Washington that came out. It's getting a lot of reviews. That was shot with Epics. That's a 2D movie. Um, the new Hitchcock movie, uh, the new Wizard of Oz movie that's coming out in a couple of, uh, Sam about a month. Sam Raimi's movie, that's shot with Epics. The list goes on and on. Basically, we are now the dominant force in motion picture um, creation has, has, for uh, digital. Has production now largely shifted to digital capture? Yes. Yeah. Um, there is still some film, and, and we respect that and love that, and there's a there's the, the reason why this camera exists is to make that logical transition and respect what film did. But as film sort of has reached its retirement age, there's still a few leftovers that will shoot it. Totally great. But uh, effectively, the majority of motion pictures now that you go to see in theaters are using our cameras and a totally digital pipeline, digital workflow. Um, and uh, yeah, slightly off topic, but another of course, uh, different thing about The Hobbit was not just that it was shot on the red cameras at 5K, but it was also shot at 48 shot at frames 48. a second. Yes. You know, they're calling HFR now in the right, cinema. High frame rate, yeah. Um, Positionally, films obviously shot at 24 frames a second. Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a big step up in terms of digital capture. Um, Chris, talk a little bit about, about, about 48 frames. And yeah, sure. Did you get a chance to see it? I have seen it in HFI, it's, yeah. uh, it, Well, it's always interesting. What did I, you think? If it's, you want an honest... Okay, yeah. I will be honest here. Yeah, I, you know, I it's love, live TV, right? So. I love the look of uh, 24, 24 frames a second. Uh -huh. I love the... To me, that's the look of cinema. Mm -hmm. I found HFR to look too much like video. Right. Uh, it looked like... Uh, it was almost like someone had filmed a stage play. It, it sort of... You lost the... Uh, the kind of the uh, artistry of the, of, of the cinematic medium. I mean, to me, shooting in, in cinema for the, for, the, for the cinema is about what you don't show as much as what you do show. I kind of made everything look a little bit fake, a lot like you on a movie set. Yeah, I think that's, that's an interesting perspective, and that is one one perspective on it. I think my perspective on it is we we at our age have watched movies at that frame rate for so long that it is ingrained in our visual psychology as to what do we expect to see out of a motion picture. And what I think is so courageous about a guy like Peter is he's saying, first of all, those are technical limitations from the past that no longer exist. We can shoot at high frame rate, we can project at high frame rate. And you know, he knows his core audience and he knows that those core audience people are willing to explore with him. And I actually, I gave an interesting interview, at, uh, I think it was, might have been to Wired Magazine, and we were talking about this phenomenon. And I said, I think what you need to do is for every 10 years you've been on the planet, you need to tack on X amount of minutes of <laughs> screen time before your brain starts to reset itself to kind of prepare yourself for this new universe. Now, a 16-year-old boy is already we watching high frame rate games content and... all day long, and to them, um, normal 24 frame movies look like old black and white TV. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense. They want things to be modern. So I think Peter really grasped that. I also think James, Cam James Cameron grasped yeah. that. Um, so, and I actually kind of play both sides of it because the, the, the vast majority of the movies that are shot with our Epic cameras are shot at the typical 24 frame rate. But I think you're seeing the next wave. And I think a lot of it has to do with where you set your expectations. And I think if you listen to some of the really smart stuff Peter says, he talks about that window to the world. Yeah. And um, the more you allow yourself to say, what if you could do a play with a hundreds of hundreds of million dollar budget and you get to see it the same way every time? And you could literally blow the back wall of a theater out and it's literally happening right in front of you. Once we in our age range and our psychology get past it, I think there is a win. And I think you're just starting to to see it. So, you know, so this is kind of like the jazz singer of the 21st century. Yeah, a little bit. And you're going to always have that. And I don't, I don't discount your opinion, which is a very popular opinion for a lot of people. They like the feel of 24 frame movies. I like the feel of 24 frame movies. But I also like the feel of something new and modern, which, of course, for a guy that builds new and modern tools, you might yeah, expect course, that, yeah. right? So I think it's actually a very interesting discussion to have. It's, the, it's definitely not a one-liner. It's really an interesting dynamic about, are you interested in the future of cinema? The future of cinema is very different than the current state of cinema. And I'm going to put a bet on two filmmakers that are 
really interesting. Two of the biggest in. filmmakers in the world. Peter Jackson and Jim Cameron are not two guys that are a bad bet, right? They kind of yeah, know no. a thing or two about it. So. I mean, I, I wrote an article just about it after I'd seen um, it in HFR, and the feedback from uh, readers on the forum had been um, largely positive. Yeah. Most people liked it. Yeah. Uh, a few people didn't. People were like me. Yeah, but, which is but most great. Really Actually, I mean, it. that's kind of what Peter and his whole team want, is if everybody likes it or nobody likes it, that's a problem. If more people like it than don't and they kind of questioning their logic that's where you start to learn yeah you know i mean i make this point i give these speeches all around the world and a lot of times they want to talk about high frame rate and i say i I'll definitely let's talk about it but first let me ask you a question and it could be a hundred people a thousand people in the audience how many people on a regular basis in this audience still type on a typewriter today <laughs> every once in a blue mood you'll get someone raise their hand but of course they're being facetious right progress happens and you start to look back now we still get the concept of a typewriter we still use it but our iPads do 2700 other things yeah. and we can do more with technology than what that tool allowed us to do same thing with film cameras versus these cameras these ca excuse me these cameras allow much more than what a film camera could accomplish because we live in a world of technology yeah. and we're still just getting started you know so it's it's interesting Okay. So that's so, camera. So stuff. that's the capture. Yeah. We got the displays. Yeah. The big question is, how do we get 4K content into the home? Right. And I, so I was just on this big panel here at CES talking about that with a bunch of um, industry leaders. LG was on the panel, uh, Sharp was on the panel, uh, JVC and Sony, and me. So it was, <laughs> I'm the oddball, you know. <laughs> but it all worked out. Um, and we talked a lot about the future and where things are going and some were thinking well it's not going to happen as fast as you think and I'm the guy saying it's going to happen way faster it than you fast think. enough for me yeah. I can tell you that. Because once you see this yeah. once you see 4K in action you never want to go back yeah. to HD and I don't care what size of the I screen or how far you're looking at. I actually reviewed 84 inch LG just three weeks ago yeah. so I had it in my lounge and you never want to go back content, right? and I was like oh my god I just this is you know right. this is the future and I want the future now. Yeah exactly and that's what when it, this is the this CES is amazing because that's the comment I hear from most people. This is the future and I expect it as soon as humanly possible. So what we're doing to help that along is we're building this box called the Red Ray Player. This 84 inch Toshiba display is driving um, from the Red Ray Player and we are playing back 4K content, true native 4K content at 2.5 megabytes per second. Yeah. So it's effectively, you know, we were joking about well, I only do web video so I don't need to use an Epic. Well actually, you know, you start to think about what the future of deliverable content is, it's not really coming over over the top networks typically, at least not first. It's gonna come from an ancillary source and Red is sort of driving that part of the revolution of it. So how exactly does the Red Ray work? I mean So it's a it's it's like a set top box, you know, you connect it to your 4K display. You can also connect it to an HD display if you don't have a 4K display yet, and it'll do both. Um, and then there's a, uh, a network that we have a partnership with, a company that's just starting as well called Odamax. And they are the 4K distribution portal slash platform. So movie studios, big, small, independent, experimental, TV, um, high resolution web based, it doesn't matter. We'll all have the ability to have channels on Odamax. It's all being worked on right okay, now. Right. We're having meetings every day. We're dealing with all of their concerns and issues, you know, digital rights management, yes, it's all built in there. Does it really do 4K? Yes. How do we get our content from 2K to 4K? And we're working on helping them. Uh, if they shot with our cameras at high resolution, a lot of times in the last few years, movies have been finished at 2K because that's what had been displayed yep. in the theaters. But they have the original assets and we can very easily go back and relink to those original assets and the DI houses can up things to four and it's not up resing you're actually rebuilding the movie in from the original capture right. footage right so spider-man in the process of doing that peter jackson's going to do it with hobbit david fincher will do it with all his movies they're actually in process and they're doing rescanning film like warner brothers is rescanning yeah, yeah a lot of that's like fight K club and blade runner and all these really important movies lawrence of arabia they mentioned today in the panel are going back to the original asset it's very expensive to do it with film it's extremely cost effective to do it with red because these are digital assets that live on normal computing environments and as long as they've maintained them properly, which big movies know how to do because they have very smart <laughs> post-production people that keep the assets correct, they go back in and say, yeah, we're going to up, up the ante and then they get this. Uh, in terms of the actual files, are, are they DCI specs or what do you so it's So DCI spec is kind of part of our universe. I'm not sort of the expert on that part of the equation. Um, but in our world, sort of, we push way too fast for sort of specification guys to sort of get in the way. We want to support as many um, companies that want to work with us. So 
this is designed not just for home use, but for exhibition as yeah. well. There'll be different iterations, um, and you'll be seeing, you know, because this can play on a, we have this same content playing in our theater off this box on a 50-foot movie screen. It looks same as this, only 50 feet. Um, so it's theatrical level quality, and DCI kind of fits into that equation. So we're right. talking with them, working with them. Standards bodies are always a well, little this tricky. This is kind of know? the first opportunity we've had now where we could theoretically have what you genuinely see in the cinema at home. At home, right. Yeah, because right. up to now it's been a slight, you know, compromise. Of well, that's why people want really big displays, mm. because the bigger the better. It feels more like a theater. And we're doing some stuff on that front as well. We're building a 4K laser-based projector. Yeah, that I was, was, was going to be my next home question. all the way to exhibition. <laughs> Which is, I've read about this, so I mean, what's the deal with the rate of the projector? So it's coming along, it's in development. Um, the, the first announced specs are 4K deliverable, you know, red ray sort of uh, embedded red, red, red in lasers, it. or are you using um, it's LED laser hybrid? Uh, that's an engineering question. Okay, I, yeah, yeah, you have to ask the engineers that stuff. And there's, there's a release date on, on the Red um, Ray? And the, the, and the Red Ray is, is actually pre-shipping now. You can order them now on the on our website. Uh, 1450 okay. So um, that kind of fits in with the early adopter. You know, it's cost effective for the fact that this panel costs about probably, you know, $20,000. Worldwide, you worldwide, can order it on our website, red.com. And you can get one and be prepared for Odomac, which will launch in a couple months, and then you'll be ready, and then you'll have it, which probably for a guy like you is not a bad thing. You should, you should have one. Um, and then the project, laser projector, that's... that's laser projectors, so it's, so it's, you know, on the order of months away. Okay. It's four or six months out, kind of. Well, Ted, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Sure, it's fun to talk to you, Steve. Great. Thanks. Thanks.